Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Precious Sosika and today in this video we are going to be diving into the thrilling world of Korean drama where we are going to discuss the highly anticipated uh, moving adaptation of the beloved Korean drama title The Uncounted Counter. If you're new to my YouTube channel, I want to say you are welcome and please do it to subscribe. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you very much for always watching the videos on my YouTube channel. So as part of my way of, you know, enjoying Korean culture, which is the mission for the K-Influencer Academy for the month of August. Today, I'm going to share with you <laughs> my own um, routine or my own way as a Korean drama addict. As you already know, if you have really, really followed my YouTube channel, you would notice that I talk about Korean dramas a lot. And that's because uh, my interest about Korean started the moment I fixed my eyes on Korean drama. So today, as a way of, you know, um, enjoying Korean drama, I am going to share with you my own opinion, my own review and recommendation about this Korean drama titled The Uncounted Counter. Uh... There were a series of events that led to this particular movie and how I got to watch it. And of course, just stay with me and when we get back, I'm going to share it with you. Let's go. Okay, so at first, I I actually saw lots and lots of reels about this particular um, uh, movie, The Uncanny Counter. And... Um, I didn't really, I just felt like, I hope this is not overhyped, you know. Uh, there are some movies that we just tend to talk about all the time. And when you watch it, you feel like, oh, this is overhyped. So I actually felt that at first. And then over time, I told myself, okay, um, <laughs> rather than feel that way about that, why did I don't just, you know, go ahead to watch it? Now, what actually prompted me to watch it was because of the genre. I am a diehard fan of paranormal works or fiction. And I also found that it was a webtoon and kind of like it's an adaptation. I was really, really super excited about it. And then I began my journey into watching this wonderful, this wonderful Korean drama. And I must say that, well, I think this is my best for the year 2023. And I think it has also got into my top five overall best Korean drama. Now, the Orkani Counter is about skilled demon hunters as they you know they are moving up with their missions to protect the humans from supernatural threats now what it what what happens is that they are humans themselves okay but then they have supernatural abilities and their job is to catch evil spirits and ensure that those evil spirits are of course they are punished and souls they probably have eaten or they have taken they return to where they ought to which is known as young, like it's like an afterword, you know. Okay, so that is what the whole story is all about. And the thing is, each of these counters now, okay, that is these demon hunters, um, at the point in their lives, maybe when they had an accident or when they were sick, but anyway, at that point when they wanted to like give up the ghost, they had partners from that you know spirit realm coming to them to partner with them telling them that they can actually become a counter you know so more like a rebirth for them okay so uh without giving spoilers i would just um you know go straight okay because i wouldn't want to give spoilers i would also want you to watch it because this is me of course this is my own um a day in my life as a korean drama act it's me sharing with you this korean movie that you should go and watch so if i give you all these spoilers now i don't really see any reason why you would watch it anymore right so i would want you to also go and um watch it now what you should know is that it's a roller coaster ride of action suspense and there are emotional moments see at some point i was like Ooh, ah, you know <laughs> all my emotions were out there because the this k drama is really really engaging so for me, I feel like one of the strengths of this um, Uncanny Counter series has always been the well-developed characters. Yes, mind you, it's a series actually because um, there is um, a season one, there's season two. Um, season two is currently ongoing. At the time of making this video, season two is ongoing and by September, we should be done with season two. Okay, uh, season one has about 16 episodes. Season two has about 12 episodes. So you can watch it. And yes, you can watch it on Netflix, um, HITV, Drama Cool. They are there on platforms. Okay, 
So, uh, like I said, the strength is the word um, develop characters and the movie doesn't disappoint at all in this regard. So, the favorite team, of course, we have uh, Sonom, um, Gamontag, Dohana, and Chumayok. Okay, so, um, forgive me if I do not get the pronunciations correctly, okay? Uh, but, yeah, that is them, alright? They... They have deep personalities and they have different backgrounds. They have different motivations. They have different um, um, strengths. Okay. They have different strengths. Yes. So let me just even hint on this a little. I said I won't give spoilers, but let me hint on some things. Uh, for example, Sonum. Okay. Um, or they call him Sona. You know, when I, when we watch it, it's Sona. So that's what, that's what I, I hear them pronounce his name as anyway. Okay. So for him... Um, he he has this ability um um psychokinesis ability and um also he can summon their territory young territory so he's almost like the strongest guy in the team and yes he's pretty strong okay but i think more of the strength lies on gamon tag gamon tag is actually a detective okay who of course there were some issues and he had a rebirth so his his, his ability is his main strength. He's really, he's a really strong guy. Yes, a really, really strong guy. And then we have Dohana. I really love his character. She's like my favorite there. Um, actually, Dohana is one of my favorites. Or should I say the favorite she made there or something? All right. So she has the ability to read your mind, you know, and she can also erase your memories. And she has good strength. I must really say, see, her ability is great because when I watched the second series, I mean, she fought two evil spirits on her hair and she was still protecting somebody. So she's really, really pretty strong. Okay, so we have the mummy of the house. I call her the mummy of the house. Uh, uh, Chumok. So, um, so for her, she actually, she's, um, she's a healer. She she has some strength, but I well for me, if I'm to place all of them, I would say that maybe she has like the least strength or so. But she's really really good when it comes to healing. Yes, healing. Yes, that is her uh, major ability. So you can see them on the screen. So anything I'm saying, I'm referring to this particular person. <laughs> okay, to save me the stress of pronouncing. <laughs> Okay, now another thing I want to talk about is the visuals. The special effects are top notch, bring it to life the supernatural elements and the epic battle. Now, the choreography of the action scenes are impressive. Honestly, the intensity of the fight, the demon showdown, see, yeah, everything about this stuff is great. And like I said, it has a very great emotional impact. Okay, um, uh, the movie has a way of making you laugh at some point, and at some point you cry. You can't help it. I really, really, really love it. Now, um, if you have followed this drama, for those who have followed this drama, you will see that um, it's a mix of everything. At some point, I'm feeling like okay, I understand it's paranormal, but I'm seeing that it's a thriller. Here. Um, at a point, I'm also seeing some tragedy. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a mix of everything, honestly, a mix of everything. And um, the cast, it really stood out. They delivered excellently well. Yes, they did so well. Like, they did great. Even the villain did so great. I like the villain in season one. And the villain in season two shocked me. You can see the guy on the screen, right? So this guy was in um, What's Wrong With Empress Kim. Okay, and uh, he was in an uh, extraordinary Anthony Wu and some other very f uh, funny, um, n well, not so funny movies, but good movies. And he played lots of second lead and this goofy character, but ah, he changed in this particular part. Seriously, everything about them is just hmm, perfect. Okay, so, um, I like the fact that it's plot and character driven, yes, because there's a whole lot of development. Over time, you see them improving. I really love that. Now, can you see this guy on the screen right now? He was actually in All of Us Had Dead and he was creepy. He was terrifying, but he's in this one and he's kind of goofy so far, okay? But I'm still yet to really see so much of his potential, but I feel he has a lot to offer. All right. So for me, my final verdict is it's an absolutely watch. You need to go and watch it. You don't need to hold back yourself at all. You need to go and watch it okay yes that is it for me sharing with you uh yeah letting you have an insight about what i do as a korean drama addict so this is it a day in the life of a korean drama addict my own way i enjoy um, um you know korean culture is by watching korean dramas and of course recommending it to you to watch ah do well to subscribe to my youtube channel and i hope you love this video 
Thank you.